Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let me refresh my iPad here, make sure I'm on. Sorry if I just bumped you. <laughs> All right. I can see me on there. Let me know how it looks for you guys. Hello, hello. Just making sure this is nice and straight. All right, how's everybody doing today? Let me know where you're watching from, from in the comments. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Always have to think about what day it is for a second. All right, so we will get started here in just a few minutes with our uh, latest Isomal live stream play date. We're doing our ship in a bottle today, which will be super fun. All right. Let me know if everything's sounding okay. Dad says he's watching from the next room. <laughs> welcome, welcome. How is everybody doing today? All right. I will show you guys our piece here that I have. We're all waiting for everybody to jump on. I don't have it attached, so I'm going to hold it very carefully. But that is what we are making today, our ice malt ship in a bottle. Um, so it's all ice malt and some cello sheets. I'm going to show you how I do the ice malt waves underneath as well. Take this guy up here so you can see it a little bit closer. And it really does have, <laughs> let me set this down, it really does have a beautiful glassy finish. You can see through the whole thing, which I think just looks so cool. Um, even with the colors being really striking. So I'm going to show you my technique for insetting that design into the bottle. And you can adapt this to any of our different size bottles. You can change the pattern or the ship that's inside. So it just makes it really, really fun to be able to customize it. Awesome. We got some people jumping on here. Hi, Trisha. How are you doing? Hello, Barbie. Hello, Evelyn. Welcome, guys. All right this carefully back over. Okay. Let me know if you guys are going to be playing along today or if you're going to be watching and um, playing along later. I always love to see what everybody's doing. All right. What I'm starting out doing is melting my ice melt so I just have that preheating. I'm going to check on it right now so we can get started. Perfect. All right, let me grab it back here to show you. All right, so of course we are using our Simi Ice Malt today. Um, so Simi Ice Malt, if you are newer to it, is all pre-cooked and ready to use. So you can see it's already in that beautiful hard candy form. Uh, we don't have any air mixed in. It's nice and crystal clear. And that is what we're going to be starting with to melt down. So once it's already tempered in this hard candy form, it makes it super duper easy to use because there's no temperatures, no recipes, no tempering, no cooking, nothing. All you do is melt it in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it is a liquid. So um, yeah, basically we're just melting that in the microwave until it is all liquefied and ready to pour into our molds. Hi, Laura. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca says she's watching today. Awesome. Hey, Ash. Welcome. Tahisha's here. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We're going to go ahead and get started and let me know if you guys have any questions and this replay will be available afterwards here on my Facebook and on YouTube so that you can go back and watch it if you are recreating this project at a later date. Trisha says, watching along and then planning on doing it later today. Awesome. Make sure to post your pictures and tag me or post them in the See Me Torch team so we can see. I would love to see your take on it. Very cool. All right, so we are going to be using uh, one of our Simi mini liquor bottles today. This is going to be the more squared bottle is the one that I chose, but you could also use a rounded bottle if you wanted to. Um, either one of those will work with this size of design that we're going to be using. You can potentially apply this, though, to any different um, bottle mold that you have. I think it would be really cool with some of our potion bottle molds would be very neat. Maybe the round one, maybe the, um, like the potion jar that we have, the one that I did with all the eyeballs last year would be really cool, that kind of shape. I just wanted something a little bit smaller um, and more accessible. 
but you can definitely apply it because the design that I have um, that we did for this project of that stormy sort of storm treader ship, uh, that is going to be sized to these small bottles. So either the round one or the square one. But remember, we do custom sizing as well. So if you ever need one of our patterns a little bit different size or tweaked a little bit for, you know, any certain way, we can do them custom. So if you wanted to make it bigger, even to do one of our full size bottles, that would be amazing. Um, and you just have lots of different options of how you can customize it. Or, of course, use your own design as well if you want wanted to, um, you can definitely use your own design for the inside of it. If you have an edible printer, you can use uh, icing sheets for this, or you can use these cello sheets like I'm going to be using today. Uh, either one of those is going to work for this project. So you can use the icing sheets, the solid icing sheets, if you want it totally opaque and not see-through. Uh, I chose the cello sheets because I wanted it to still look like glass, so I wanted to be able to see through the pattern. But remember, depending on the design, those are a little bit harder to see sometimes. I knew this one was going on a plain background, and the color are very very bold and very contrasting so I knew it would be perfect but if you have something that's a little bit more subtle or you know it's gonna go on a busy background I would recommend using the icing sheet option which all of our sheets you can get printed on different types of sheets the icing sheet will stand out a little bit more if it's gonna be on a busier cake or something on the background um, maybe you're doing like a pirate ship cake or something like that all right fantastic Evelyn got the sheet so she can do it later and watch today fantastic all right so I'm going to go ahead and tilt the camera down here. Um, so just give me a second uh, and I will show you guys what we're going to start with. So one minute, guys. I'll try not to drop you. All right. I'm going to let my camera catch up here and just make sure we are in a good view. All right. How's that look, guys? Let me know. I have my iPad set up here so I can still see your comments. And mom and dad are here too, so they will be helping to monitor those. Hi, everybody. All right. Fantastic. So there is our uh, ship in a bottle mold uh, that we are going to use, or our, our mini liquor bottle. Again, this is the squared one, and then you can also use the rounded one if you wanted to. We have our semi ice malt here. I'm going to show you again one more time a little bit closer what that bottle looks like. You guys can see it. We might have this one. Here we go. Yes, that is one thing that I wanted to go over is you guys may have a little bit different variety of the bottle mold. It might be the same shape, um, but we have a couple of different kind of um, styles just from, you know, over um, the time that we've had them. So yours may have a sleeve on it, okay, on the outside. You'll notice this one that I'm using does not. Yours may have a sleeve on it, and you can do this technique exactly the same way I'm going to show you. Um, just at the end, when we put the whole thing together, you're going to make sure you have that sleeve, if it came with one. If it did not, don't worry about it. Um, just some of these versions of the molds, uh, I do have the sleeve on the outside of it. So make sure if yours has a sleeve, um, it's definitely going to want to, you're going to want to use that in the end. But when we do this first part, when we're encasing it, don't worry about the sleeve, um, and I'll kind of show you as we go when you'll integrate that sleeve in. We like that um, silicone a little better and uh, it's not quite as strong so the sleeve just gives it that extra firmness. Exactly yeah so kind of for the newer version of this um, we really liked the silicone um, like mom said of the yellow one so that's why we just use the sleeve to reinforce it because we like the finish a little bit better now um, than the original ones but they still are going to work great no matter which one you have. All right. Fantastic. Ash said, yay for mom and dad. <laughs> Evelyn says, hi, Michelle. Hello. Uh, Rebecca said, looks good. Okay, awesome. All right, so we are going to grab our edible image. So like I said, you can use your own edible sheets for this. Just size them to the bottle that you have. This is one of our designs that we did specifically for uh, this um, project. Okay, so you can see this beautiful, beautiful, I named it the Storm Treader just because it looked like a really pretty sort of stormy um, ship scene. And uh, so that's why it's named mine. But you guys are welcome to name yours with a whole bunch of fun pirate ship or maybe more classical uh, sailing ship names. But that's what I named mine. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out. So these are on cello sheets. Cello sheets are an amazing, amazing edible paper created by Icing Images. So they are going to work really well compared, uh, when paired with ice malt because they're clear. So unlike regular icing sheets, which again you can use for this, um, or the semi transfer sheets, which are great for lollipops and things like that, these are completely clear. So these are the clearest on kind of the scale of opacity of the different sheets. The clear cello sheets are going to be perfect with ice melt if you want that perfectly clear finish. 
Of course, the colors will take away from the clarity a little bit. So the darker the color, the more opaque that is. And that will be really fun to sort of play with as you get started in them. But what we're going to do first is we're going to go on the plastic or on the cello sheet side and we're going to cut out the design with an exacto. You don't want to try and peel the whole sheet off first. You want to cut the design um, no matter what you're doing. You always want to cut it first and peel that away because it pe releases a lot easier in smaller sections than if you peel the whole sheet away first. Plus, then you can save the rest of the sheet for later. Just make sure when you're not using the cello sheets that you store them in an airtight container. So I just put mine into a Ziploc or into an airtight Tupperware container. Make sure they're staying flat and you can save these. But if you leave them out for any period of time, they're very sensitive to moisture and to humidity. So just make sure that you are sealing these even just for a couple minutes in between use because they are very sensitive to that environment. So they could curl a little bit. Now, if you're not sure which is the plastic side and which is the cello side, all you have to do is take a little bit of water on your finger um, and just tap it on the corner of the sheet where you're not going to use that piece of sheet. And whichever side gets sticky, of course, is going to be the edible side. That's the cello side. And then the plastic side won't react at all to the water. So um, if you're ever not sure which side was your cello, um, you can definitely test it that way. And then once I have the cello scored, so I didn't actually cut through the backing, I just scored it. You see how it's just sort of peeling off naturally on that corner, if you guys can see that. And I'll just be able to peel that piece right off. So this is the actual cello sheet. There's no non-edible parts of this anymore. It's all the edible sheet. It has a really interesting texture. It's almost like a window decal. It's very much like a vinyl. And then this extra piece I'm going to put back into my bag and keep that sealed, especially if you're in a really humid, like I am, or a very dry climate, um, these definitely are susceptible to that, so just keep them airtight. All right, now I just do want to trim this a little bit so that it fits exactly in my bottle. I made this slightly oversized when I sized it to the bottle, so it's going to be um, kind of customizable to whatever size and shape your bottle is. I don't want to cut off all from one side. I'm going to cut a little bit at the top and a little at the bottom so I don't lose too much of one side because I love the waves at the bottom and I love the sort of cloudy waves at the top and the top of the ship. So I don't want to just cut a big chunk of one side off. I just want to make it slightly smaller than the inside of the mold. Okay, these little pieces can be tossed. And then you can set yours. So kind of think about which way you want the ship going. I wanted the ship part to be towards the back of the piece. And then um, it's sort of sailing towards the, the opening of the bottle. Or it's closed in this case, but kind of towards the mouth of the bottle. I wanted it sailing forward. And so I'm going to cut, because you can see a little bit of the um, sheet overhangs sort of the corners here. So I'm going to cut off the corners just at that front part of the sheet so that it sits inside. I just love the imagery of a ship in a bottle. Of course, there's more, you know, classic styles of just having the ship itself. So if you didn't want the background, you could potentially cut out the ship out of this or use a different design that's just the ship with a clear cello around it, similar to how we did like the um, mos mosquito and amber lollipops for Halloween last year. So the clear cello sheet doesn't look like anything inside. It just looks like the image is suspended. But I really liked um, kind of the look of this one because I really like the fantasy aspect of it. I love the idea that there's just a little ship and a little storm sort of stored inside this bottle. Um, and I just think that that's really cool kind of fantasy story to it rather than just the ship. But if you wanted to do more of like a classic ship in a bottle, maybe you're doing this cake for like a collector or someone who builds ships in a bottle. Um, you definitely could do, you know, more of the classic look, put it on a perfect base, add a little like tag to the front of it and make it look more like a model rather than like the little bit of fantasy aspect that we have here. And if you took the octopus class last year. Oh, you can put the octopus on the outside trying to get to the ship. That's such a cool idea. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, somebody's got to do it now. <laughs> Jesse Ann says, oops, I'm late. You made it. Hey, Jesse Ann. All right. So what we're going to do first is, again, if you have a sleeve on your bottle, um, if you have one of the newer ones, uh, leave that off for now. We're going to be encasing this inside. So I don't just want to stick the edible sheet to the back of the piece or stick it, you know, on the front of the piece, which you could do. I actually, though, want it to look encased inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottle and open it up so we have half and half. I am going to set one half 
um, down, okay, just like normal. The other one I'm going to put so the flat side is down, the rounded side is up, and the side without the hole. So you see how one side has the opening? I'm going to take the side that does not have that opening and put it up against the opening on this side. Does that make sense? So we're actually closing off the opening so that we can fill this up halfway without all the ice melt just running out. I'm going to do this off to the side so that we can work on some of our other pieces while that is cooling. Okay, so I'm going to put this probably, let's see, I want it somewhere you guys can see. Maybe that'll be a little bit better. Let's try that. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so I do press these together really well. It might not sit perfectly flush, but as long as it's close enough so that nothing is going to be running out, that is the main key. If you need to put something heavy on either end to help it to really hold into place, you can. But usually these are heavy enough to hold because there's we're not putting that much weight of ice malt into these. I think these bottles solid only weigh about three to four ounces, so they're not too heavy. All right, so we melted down our ice malt for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals. This one has sat in the microwave for a couple of minutes, so you can see it stopped boiling. But it's very important, especially with this technique where we want it as clear as possible to see the design, that you bring it to a boil in the microwave and then you let it settle. So you let all the bubbles disperse after it comes to that nice rolling boil, and then you're going to be left with crystal clear ice malt. Trisha would like to know how long do the cellar sheets last if properly stored? Um, do the cello sheets have a, a yeah. recommended? I would have to look check with icing images. Uh, let's, yeah, if we go through them so quickly, that's a very good question. We yeah. will find out. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely find that out. But I know that they're, I mean, I've had them as long as they're stored and you're not leaving them out. I know, I mean, I've had them for weeks, if not months. Um, and as far as usability, they're fine. But we can check for the actual um, recommended expiration as far as, you know, food product wise goes and get back with you on that. All right. Uh, Jesse Ann, there will be a replay you can watch later. Yes, definitely. Yep. The replay will be available. And Ash said, chocolate octopus arm plus ice malt ship in a bottle equal my future. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour the first half of the bottle first. Okay. I know this is a little bit far away for you guys to see, but hopefully you'll still be able to see enough of what we're doing. Um, it's very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to pour the ice malt into the mold. Now, remember, the ice malt is very hot right now. It's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So don't touch it. Make sure you're wearing gloves. I highly recommend a cotton glove and then a nitrile or a latex glove over top of that, and the double layer will protect your hands from the heat. Um, but the more you work with this with your gloved hands, the more confident you're going to get and the easier it will become, um, and you'll get a lot more comfortable. Um, but definitely wearing those gloves is a good precaution to take. Don't follow my bad example, please. All right, so what we're going to do is we are just going to pour enough isomalt to fill up this half. So I'm going to start kind of at the top and then just fill it in here. You can start slow and just make sure nothing is leaking out. Try If you're doing this, try and do this kind of in the middle so that if any ice melt does pour out, it really doesn't matter because it'll just be caught by the silicone mat. And then you can throw it back in and redo it. All right. So I'm just pouring enough to go slightly less than full. If you have any little bubbles, okay, I'm going to take my torch and just lightly pop those before we lay our image in. Okay. And then I am just going to start at the back and you know how if you're putting like a window decal on, you wanna squeegee all the air out. I'm kind of laying it down one end at a time and just letting it fall towards the front so that all the air sort of pushes its way out. So you can start at the front or the back and the sheet will kind of melt as it gets into the ice malt. So just very carefully let that fall in. If you need to sort of move it around, you can use a toothpick or a silicone tool or the end of your X-Acto in my case. Just kind of push it around, make sure it's in the middle. The nice part about these bottles is, especially with the round one, it's gonna magnify, right? Cause it's a rounded glassy surface. So just like glass, it will magnify. But even with this one, it does magnify a little bit. So if it doesn't go all the way to the edge, if you cut it a little bit short, it'll actually give it the illusion that it does come to the edge because of the magnification of the image and the way that the light kind of goes through the ice malt. All right, and that's it. I just laid it into the liquid ice malt, but again, this whole thing is full of ice malt. So even up into the throat of the bottle, I filled that whole thing, even though there's not actually any image there. And we're gonna let that cool until it's solid. 
and we'll pick it back up, put the mold together, and then fill it up the rest of the way to really encase it. So if you look at the um, bottle, you can see that the image is halfway inside. But when you look at it from the front, it looks like it's all kind of encased in there. So Rebecca wants to know, yeah. could you paint on the back side of the bottle after unmolding with the color splash to make an image instead of using the sheet? Yeah, you could definitely do that. So you can fill the half of the bottle um, and then let it cool all the way. You can take it out or leave it in. It would probably be a little better to leave it in if you can, but you could take it out and then put it back in the mold if you had to. Paint on it, and then once that paint dries, you can just put it, you know, the other layer of ice melt on the other side. I think that would be really cool. Do you think you'd have to glaze it first? Um, it might help to glaze it first just so the paint doesn't run because it could be reactivated with the, um, the ice melt when it goes on. I guess it would depend on the kind of paint probably, but glazing may be a good idea just in case and then but she was asking on the back of it so the, all the way to the back I think it would work yeah it would definitely work if you just did it on the whole back of the piece so you poured the, bo the bottle solid like normal and then um yeah you did it the rest of the way I think that would definitely work that would be all good ideas guys love it all right fantastic um, now, uh, Mom, if you don't mind, would you get me the um, ice from the freezer, please? Gotcha. All right, guys, keep the questions coming. We're going to let that cool, okay? So we're going to let it cool all the way. I am going to put a little fan on it just to speed this up for demo purposes, okay? But you don't have to do that. It'll probably be cool, depending on the temperature of your kitchen, it'll probably be around 15 to 20 minutes at least until this is solid enough to stand up. Thank you. Right. Now we're going to be melting our blue. So if you are following along, go ahead and throw your blue ice melt in the microwave. Again, 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it is a liquid. And uh, we're going to be pouring the blue over top of some ice to give it the really, really pretty wave effect. So you can see that is my waves that I have here. All right, we're going to do some detail painting to bring out the edges of it, but this is one of my favorite techniques because it's so simple, but it looks really, really beautiful when it's done. And um, it's really awesome to use ice melt for this because it holds up so much better than sugar. So um, you may have seen this done with ice melt before, um, and the thing is, ice melt and water or sugar and water, of course, do kind of um, go head to head a little bit because you don't want to dissolve or sort of melt the ice melt in water since it is water soluble. Um, but because of our ice melt and the recipe of it, it just holds up a lot better. And I have a bunch of tips and tricks to help you guys to maintain these. They do look the best and the shiniest probably within uh, the first couple of days, depending on your humidity. So just keep that in mind if you are doing this for a cake, if you can do it as close as possible to the event, that is best. But I've had this piece here since I made this example piece probably about a month ago. And as you can see, it's held up. It hasn't melted or fallen or broken down. It's gotten a tiny bit cloudy in some areas, but a lot of areas are still shiny. So I'm gonna tell you all of my tricks to doing this because I think these are really cool. Also, you could do them as like a border around the cake. If you're gonna plan a cake with this, you can do kind of bunches of this on the cake at um, different tiers, like you would flowers and then have some like sea life nestled in it. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with this. This is really great for coral as well if you do it in different like oranges and um, things like that. But I wanted to give it sort of like an abstract wave look. So that's why we did it in blue. And then we're gonna highlight the edges of it with the white. And that's gonna be a sort of a perfect base for our bottle to sit into. You could glue the bottle in if you wanted to. I just wanted to kind of have it free moving so I can show you guys each piece a little bit easier. All right. So the first thing that you're gonna want when you are using ice, and ice melt is a lot of paper towels, okay? Um, this does get a little messy, but that's what makes it fun, right? Okay, so that's that boil that I was talking about. You wanna bring this up to a really nice rolling boil and that's gonna get all of those air bubbles out. So we'll let that sit now that it's gotten to that rolling boil. I'm gonna take like five or six of these thick paper towels and just have them ready. Off to the side over here. Okay, and then we have a cup of ice. Now this is gonna make a really big difference 
depending on what kind of ice you use. So if you use cubes, if you use crushed, if you use different shapes, it's all going to give you different effects. I'm using regular ice cube tray uh, ice cubes, but I did put them in a bag and just smash them a little bit so that they broke up into slightly smaller pieces. Otherwise, if you think about pouring over cubes, it sometimes looks a little bit geometrical, um, you know, because it's contouring to the cube shape. But with this, it has some kind of variety into it. So that's what I wanted. But again, experiment with what you have and get some different ideas because they really do come out beautiful no matter what shape you have. It's just kind of about learning uh, how to predict it and how to tweak it into what you want. All right. I do like to use a silicone bowl with this because it is going to um, release. So if the ice mold accidentally touches the sides or the bottom of the bowl, when I go to unmold this, it is going to come out cleanly and it's not going to stick. If you don't have a silicone bowl big enough to do this, or you need more bowls than what you're using, or you want a different shape of a bowl, you can use a regular, as long as it's heat safe, of course, you don't want anything that's going to melt. You can use a regular bowl, but cover it in some aluminum foil that's been greased. So use a little bit of aluminum foil and grease it with some cooking spray first. That way, um, when you put the ice in and then you put the ice molten, if any of it sticks, it will release from it, okay? All right. Now at this point, remember, before you pour your ice malt, um, if anybody uh, is wondering about coloring or flavoring or anything like that, you can color and flavor your own ice malt from clear if you would like to. So you can mix in a water or an alcohol-based airbrush color to get this beautiful transparent finish, or you can mix in petal dust and luster dust for solid finishes. You just want to make sure that you never ever mix in um, anything that's going to be a gel base because the gel will break down the ice malt and not allow it to dry properly for you. All right, so what we're gonna do now that all of our bubbles are gone, oh, also about flavoring, um, you wanna use an oil-based flavor if you want to add any flavor into it. Um, but with our bubbles gone now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour right over top of the ice. So I'm just going to pour a pretty good amount so that it's nice and strong. Just sort of let the tendrils sort of go all the way around. Remember, it's melting down into the ice, so if I pour too much, it's going to start pooling on the bottom once it gets there. So I don't want to do too much. It does take a little bit of experimenting. What's happening is the ice malt is melting the ice while the ice is cooling the ice malt, and you get these really cool sort of drips and almost like fingers reaching down into the ice after it's cool because, of course, the ice will melt away, but the ice malt will be frozen into place. All right, so we're going to put that off to the side and let that cool for just a couple minutes. You don't want to leave this too long because then the um, the water can get to the ice malt. So just make sure that you're taking this out immediately when it's cool. So obviously right now it's not quite cool, but these do set up very quickly because of how cold the ice is. So it's only going to take a couple of minutes before it starts to solidify. So we're just going to slide this out of the way and then we're going to unmold this in just a few. Now it really depends on what kind of vessel you're using as well for these pieces. So if you're using something that's really cylindrical and tall and you pour more ice malt, you're going to have very long sort of tendrils. If you do something flat, like maybe a sheet pan that's been greased and you put the ice over that or a cake pan, you can get very flat, almost like background pieces. Um, or you can do really large pieces and break them up that way as well into little bits for cupcakes and things like that. So um, depending on what shape your bowl is will really dictate how what kind of pieces you're going to get. Y'all had a good question. Um, will it give a water effect if you do it while boiling or it shouldn't be done? Yeah, you can do it while boiling. You'll get a little bit thinner pieces because the ice malt will be so hot and you'll get some really cool sort of bubbles in it if you don't let the bubbles settle first. So it definitely can be good for like if you're doing like a um, crawfish boil cake or like a boiling pot. Um, you can definitely do like little bits of this on the top of it and it looks it looks really, really cool and realistic because the water almost looks like it's jumping up rather than if you just did like crushed ice malt, which is still cool, but it doesn't quite have that bubbling effect. So it definitely can look really, really neat. All right, fantastic. All right, so what we're gonna do next um, is we're letting that cool and we are going to be pouring the other half of our bottle. It looks like it's just about cool. While it's cooling the rest of the way, I'm going to remelt my ice melt because it got kind of thick. So remember, you can always remelt your ice melt if it gets thick. Just pop it back in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it comes back to a boil. You do want to boil it every time so that any air pockets that were in there um, or any air bubbles that were stuck to the sides are going to boil themselves out. Okay. 
Unless, of course, you were trying to do something that had bubbles inside, something like this, it may actually um, help it. Maybe not necessarily with the image inside, but like with the water and the waves, um, or if you're doing something kind of under the sea or pirate themed, sometimes you want those bubbles in there because it looks more realistic like water. seconds or so. Okay. So you want to make sure that the set first half is solid enough that it's not going to slump. So when we pick this up and set it upright, it's not so pliable and soft that it's going to slump because then the image can get distorted. So it can kind of fall down a little bit and um, the isomalt will just kind of not set up properly that way. So you do want to make sure that you just have that cool enough and you don't pick it up too soon. You could even potentially place different images instead of one big image inside. You could do a whole bunch of different little ones. I tend to like one big image because it's a lot less work to cut out each individual image than it is just to cut out a whole background sort of piece. And the beauty of the cello sheet is anywhere that's clear around your images you don't see, so it just looks like there's nothing there. All right. So I'm going to let those bubbles settle off to the side here. And I actually think our ice piece might be ready to come out while we're letting that settle. It's just that fast. So Sid, I have a question. Yeah. Could you do multiple layers, like pour a quarter and put one like big picture and then pour another quarter of the half? Yeah. Like and have... Do it layered like that? Yeah, yeah you definitely could do that. Um, I would say you just have to be mindful of what is in front of each other. And if you're using cello sheets, you would have to go from lighter, more pale colors in the back to really bold, defined... Uh, darker maybe like silhouettes in the front because they could get lost on each other being see-through But especially if you're doing this with like icing sheets It would work really well because they would all stand out from each other So if you wanted it to look very layered you could definitely pour less than half and just do as many layers as you want You can even do layers in the other half as well Just be mindful of which direction you're facing You know the pieces if you're doing it in two different halves so that they all fit together But you could do this in both halves if you wanted to um, and as long as you leave enough room to fill into the center of it to join them. Okay, kind of like um, you did the spears for the, um, what did you, uh, snow globes? Yes, exactly how we did that. Okay, um, Trisha would like to know what size bowl that is. This one is a three cup bowl, the one that I'm using, um, so it's pretty large. I believe this one's from Pampered Chef. Um, the small ones that I'm using are um, an eight ounce bowl and these are from our website. I like the smaller ones for pouring detail work uh, because it is uh, really easy to make a spout with them. This one has a little bit of a spout, but there's so much in it when you're working that uh, it's better for really big stuff or for things like this. And uh, the little ones are better for like pouring details and making sure you get it in the mold and everything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and flex that bowl. Okay, first, just to make sure it's not stuck anywhere. Then we're just going to pull this out. It can be a little bit hard to figure out where to grab it. I tested it with my silicone tool first, if you saw that, to make sure that there's nothing still hot. You're gonna have to do a little bit of work to kind of yank out the ice cubes, because as you can see, they like to stick. Some of the ice mold is gonna break, that's just how it is, and that's okay. okay. You can piece these back together. Sometimes I break these on purpose apart so I can piece them back together the way that I want. Okay, but look how cool that's looking already from the front. And that water really makes it sparkle as well because it just melts sort of the surface of the ice malt and makes it so shiny. These are great for frozen themed cakes too, especially this color. All right, I have a couple of pieces of ice that are really stuck in there, so I'm gonna break some of the ice malt to get them out. Some of these little ones, though, I'll probably just leave to melt out because they should be melted by the time we need it. But I'll just take a little bit of time to sort of coax it out there, and then I'll leave it on my dry paper towel. And then this ice is still good. Sometimes I'll drain the water if a lot starts accumulating in there just so that the ice melt doesn't come in contact with the water at the bottom of the bowl. But all that ice is ready to use again. And the cool part is every time you pour, the ice is gonna change shapes, right? Cause the ice melt's melting it. So you're gonna get different looks and effects every time. You can always add more ice in if you get low or you want a different shape, but it just makes it really unique. Okay, you will get very sticky from this. So that's why I'm just drying my hands off. Um, but as the ice melt melts and mixes with the water, it definitely will get a little sticky. But we're just going to put that off to the side, but look how awesome that is, just on its own. So you can see the shininess of this one compared 
to the one that I made before. Again, that's about a month ago. So it still holds its integrity. It's just that shininess. So again, the closer that you make these pieces, the shinier and more glassy they're going to look because that moisture does cloud them a little bit. And actually, the cloudiness helps with this because we're going for um, sort of that white capped wave look. Another thing I will do is if there's any water on the surface of this, especially as the ice melts, you want to dab that away. You don't just want to leave that sitting there because it will start to eat away at the ice melt. So you want all the water to drain off as quickly as possible. So if you still have ice melting in there like I do, just periodically go through and dab that water away. It's so sticky that in classes, mm -hmm. um, people will grab their torch and use it, and then the trigger doesn't work anymore. Yeah, because the, the stickiness <laughs> gums up the, uh, <laughs> the trigger and all the buttons and everything. Yeah, it really is sticky, so just be careful of that. Make Catherine sure. asks, oh, it's, she says it's gorgeous. Thank Did you. she miss what color blue that is? This is our light blue, I believe, um, from our pre-colored, but you can also use like your airbrush color to um, mix it in. This is our semi color splash, so you can do just a tiny, tiny bit of the uh, ocean blue. Okay, perfect. So now our half of the bottle is going to be ready. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to first take these two pieces apart so you can see it just pops right off. Sometimes you'll have a little bit more than that at the base that kind of overhangs, uh, and that's okay. You can trim that up later. It's no big deal, but you can see it does give you a pretty clean edge there. And then what we're going to do now that this piece is solid is we're just going to put the two halves together. So I'm going to take the filled half and the empty half, rubber bands on the outside, and by doing it this way rather than making two separate halves and gluing the halves together is you're going to get a seamless piece. They would put that cardboard over the yes one. thank you so if you have a cardboard sleeve before you put the rubber bands on you put the cardboard sleeve on first and then the rubber bands go on the outside of it okay but up until this point it was the exact same process all right so just double wrap those rubber bands make sure that they're kind of spread out from top to bottom all right Make sure that the uh, mold is lined up as well. It can be a little harder to tell when there's a piece sort of rigid in there, but just run your finger around the outside and look at it visually. Make sure that nothing looks off about the two halves. All right. And do that before you would put your sleeve on if you have the sleeve. Then we're just going to fill it the rest of the way up. So this warm ice melt that is now settled is going to bond with the ice melt that's there. So I just go nice and slow. We don't do our filling and draining with this one just because the image is already in there. So there wouldn't be that much to fill and drain. All right. And there, because we poured most of it open, there's not as much chance of air pockets getting trapped in as when you're pouring down a tiny little cylinder. So I just fill that up to the top. It's okay if the bottom has a little seam in between it, but you can lightly torch and just melt those together. And you see they sort of blend together. All right, and then we'll let this cool the rest of the way. That will probably take around 30 minutes or so for it to set up at least. So we're going to put that off to the side. And then, of course, by Demo Magic, I have one that's already made. All right, over here. So I just, after I store pieces, if I'm not quite ready to use them yet, because I made this about an hour or two ago, I put them in an airtight container since it's not glazed yet. And there is our beautiful bottle. So you can see I have not done anything else other than take it out of the mold. It does have some bubbles on the surface, so we're going to take those away here and make that clarity really, really amp up. But you can see from the side, you see where the image is, which is, I think, a really, really neat effect um, because it almost looks like one of those etchings, like those shadow box um, that you can get like your initials and your picture and stuff inside. I think that looks really neat. Um, but it also does look really seamless on the outside. It looks like a piece of glass across the top. It doesn't have any seam on this top part here. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and torch away those bubbles. This is going to make a huge difference in how clear this design is going to be, and you're going to be able to see that as we go. So I'm just going to do light layers with my chef's torch, not holding it in my hand. Okay, set it down and then torch. There we go. You can already see just from back there how much that made that super bright. The ice mold also saturates the edible sheets, whether you're using the cello or the um, icing sheet, and it really makes the colors pop, which I love. 
And that was just from doing one side. Once we do all the way around and the top, it's going to let a lot more light in through the sides because right now the bubbles are sort of taking away from that light going through the glass. And it's going to really, really make it bright and pop. Only do one side at a time. So whether it's the flat or the round bottle, only do the top. And then you're going to let that cool before you rotate it and continue because you don't want it to start dripping. If you do a little too much torching, you don't want it to start um, getting an indent or anything like that from setting it down. Look how beautiful that is. I absolutely love it. And you see how you can really see through it, especially in the lighter areas like the white caps of the, um, the waves and the sails. I just love that. Okay, so I'm going to, now that that's cooled for a couple minutes, I'm going to rotate and do this all the way around, including on the top areas here. Do the underneath. I'm going to use my little fan just to speed up the cooling in between torching, but you can do this in light layers. So I have most of the little bubbles of this side melted away, but I have some bigger ones that did not. It's okay if that happens. Just let it cool first and then do it again. Don't try and torch and torch and torch too much to get all of them at once because then it could burn the surface and start to make it yellow. So what we're going to do is just let it cool and then you can torch again. You could even take a little tool if you needed to when it's liquid, when you torched it and sort of stir it together like you would flatten out like royal icing on a cookie. You can do that too. Okay, just the underside, which will help a lot since this is the opposite of the design side. And some bubbles are fine, even if you have some mixed into it. I have a couple in there, and I actually really like it because, it, again, it looks like water. It looks like motion, um, and just it's a little bit more dynamic of a look rather than it being completely glassy clear. Okay, they also sort of sparkle from the way that the light hits the little bubbles in there, so it adds a little bit of a glittery look in a way. Okay, and then finally... The last side here. All right. I have a little bit that had over poured um, from where that end was. So when I put the two halves kind of end to end to cover up the hole at the base when I was pouring the first half, I have a little bit that overflowed, but I'm going to be able to trim that really easily. So if you guys have that, I'll show you how to fix that. First, we'll let that cool really well. Alright, you guys have any questions? Doing okay? I love it. Yay, I'm so glad. I was really excited about this piece. There we go. So look how much more vibrant and just brilliant that is after torching. Okay, if you have those little pieces that you need to cut away. We just torch those. Give those about 10 or 15 seconds for the heat to sink in. And then you should just be able to cut them. And torch them again. And just kind of continue that until it's all gone. And then all these little extra pieces you can just remelt. I'm just going to press it flat again. Not that this is going to be sitting up, but just to sort of blend it. And I can continue doing that until it's all taken care of. All right, beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take our ice piece here. And we're going to do a little bit of painting. I still have a couple little ice cubes that haven't budged there. They're almost melted out, but that's okay. We'll just ignore those for now, for time's sake. But of course, wait till that dries off a little bit. Hands are already sticky from touching that. All right, and the only paint I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of white on the edges of the waves, and then a little bit of bronze luster dust on the cap of the bottle. And of course, that's personal preference. So I'm using bronze from the Sugar Art. This is one of their Sterling Pearl powders, and then I'm using their color solution. You can use a clear alcohol as well to thin down the powder. And we're just going to add this 
on to the end, but you could do gold, you could do silver, you could do whatever color you like. I just thought the brown would kind of look good with the color of the ship, making it a little bit more natural. And I'm going to, usually I would let this dry before you paint it, of course, but it's going to take a little while for that to happen. So I'm just going to show you how I paint. Basically, I'm just going to take a nice flat brush and I'm just going to kind of go sideways and catch all of the little points and the little details. Okay. Just like that. And I just think it helps to kind of be able to see a little bit better and it adds sort of that stormy look of the waves on the inside and sort of mimics them on the outside. So you see how it just makes it a little bit more like it pops. All right. And then you can take multiple pieces of this if you want to and piece them together. So you can torch and stick different pieces together or use a little bit of ice melt to dip and stick the different ice pieces together to sort of build yourself a base. All right. Rebecca says she cleans everything up now with her Zyoto pen. She loves it for oh, that purpose. Oh, perfect. Yeah, the Zyoto would work perfect to clean up the bottom of that. I love that. Definitely. Okay. And then, of course, again, I would let everything dry, but just for time's sake here, we're going to go ahead and just kind of arrange this in. So this one looks like it kind of is going in an upwards direction. So I would just nestle that right down and in. And you can use a little bit of liquid ice malt to glue that together if you want to. Or if you would rather leave them separate until you assemble it at the venue, you could bring your torch and just zap it to stick it down or leave it separate like I did it on mine. But that is our nice, pretty, glassy pirate ship in a bottle here. And our beautiful ice, uh, poured over ice pieces with that really pretty sparkle. I just love how that looks. And the nice part about these is they come out good every single time. Um, they just all look so unique. Even if they break, they still look awesome and you can glue them back together into different shapes. And I really just love this one. So make sure, um, another one of my tricks, especially for the ice pieces, make sure that you glaze them right away. So as soon as all the ice is melted, you've been continuously blotting away all the moisture, you want to let that dry just a little bit. It'll still be tacky for a very long time, but as soon, long as there's no sitting water or moisture on the surface and it's just tacky and sticky, you want to go ahead and glaze it. And then you'll also want to glaze this piece as soon as it is dry, or as soon as it is cool, I should say. Um, you want to go ahead and glaze both of these pieces with the clear edible glaze spray. That will make sure that they don't get sticky or cloudy. It will lock sort of any excess moisture from absorbing into the ice malt, and it'll keep them nice and shiny and pretty. Like I said, the ones that had the direct moisture on the surface may not stay shiny for as long, but as long as you're blotting away that moisture and you glaze it right away, you can keep these pieces. Like I said, that one has been for a month, and then it's going to keep these pieces nice and shiny because it didn't have any moisture sitting on the surface. So that glaze is really, really important for your last step. Okay, so I glaze all of my finished pieces when they're done, um, after they're all put together or assembled or painted or whatever you're going to do with them. And then that's just going to really help to lock out all of the moisture. All right, so what do you guys think? You guys have any other questions? Let me know. I'm going to tilt my camera back up here because I have a couple of announcements here to show you guys. All right. Roller coaster back up here. <laughs> Show them what's behind you. All right. What, this one here? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so let me stop wiggling here. I had this piece I wanted to show you guys too for our upcoming retreat. I've had her sitting on my back table here for a little while with me, helping me work. And um, so this is our mermaid. This is all ice malt, um, ice malt sculpture. And this is going to be for our 2024 retreat, our Simi retreat here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Um, and we are going to be creating this in my class. We're gonna have some amazing classes going on with Don Butler uh, and Donald Joyner. And then this one is going to be my uh, full day class that we're gonna be introducing our new line of molds for, our new line of face molds. Um, and then hand sculpting the rest of all of the beautiful details. So if you need more information on that, we still do have a few spots left. So make sure that you go on our website 
It payment is. Payment plans available. What's that? Payment oh, yes. Plans we have payment plans available because it is a multiple day event. Um, and that is super, super fun. We do that in January. Um, so January of 2024, we're going to have our next one. And uh, yeah, we still have some tickets available. It is absolutely beautiful here in January. So definitely come and join us. Um, super fun whenever we do our retreats. Uh, we have such a fun group uh, and lots of games and we have raffles and we have prizes and classes and demos and evening events and make and takes and a whole bunch of fun stuff. We pack it, our schedule full for sure. Um, but super excited for that. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Um, so let's see. We have a couple of other upcoming um, events and things that are going on. Um, now, as always, I like to show you guys our next play date at the end of each play date. So our August project uh, is one that I am so excited for. So we do a lot of ice malt butterflies. I posted a little teaser on the Torch team and in my stories the other day, if you guys saw it. We do a lot of ice malt butterflies. It's one of my favorite things to do, and it's definitely one of our most popular um, techniques, uh, both with artists and with our clients um, who we're making the pieces for. And it's really, some. I think one of those things, butterflies are just never going to go out of style. It's just one of those classic looks. But I thought, how can we take our butterflies to the next level? So our next play date is going to be all about bringing your ice melt butterflies to the next level. So I have the piece here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to pick it up very carefully. Hmm. Yeah. Moment of truth here, guys. So what we wanted to do is we are going to create a 3D stained glass isomalt butterfly piece, okay? Now you can create this piece on the base, the little half dome here that I have, or you can create the butterflies alone if you want to. I'm going to show kind of our original technique of creating those really, really beautiful, simple butterflies that are so easy, but I thought that we should bring this to the next level and create a 3D butterfly because I think that these would be absolutely awesome all over a cake. Um, and so we're going to actually be sculpting, uh, hand sculpting and pulling the body. So that's going to be all 3D done by hand. And then we have a brand new sheet uh, of butterfly design. So this is just one of the four different designs, which I will show you guys here. I absolutely love this one. It's different from our traditional, more classic butterflies. This one is all stained glass Themed, okay, so this is going to be our play date project for next month. I believe it is. We have a date on there. I think. Hold on. The fifth. The fifth, maybe. All right, of August, and I'll show you our sheets that we have. So this is the one that I based <clears throat> mine on. Okay, so you can see that big beautiful butterfly there, and then there's some smaller sort of almost speckly designs. Those are two of the designs that we have. I did an alternate version because I know some people prefer more of a monarch style butterfly to the blue butterfly. So we also, it's the same small ones, but we have this big, beautiful monarch inspired stained glass butterfly that still has more of a unique look. It's not the super realistic ones like we have on the other design. So it still is very different. Uh, and then we have a couple of other ones too. I don't know if I have any of those over here. I think I do. Yeah, this one is on a transfer sheet as well. You can see I already used one of these. Um, but there's a couple of other designs on there, okay, that you can see. So I think this is the other one that I really, really like. Kind of has like a mixture of colors in it with the oranges and everything. It's a little different than the speckly one I used on the piece. So we have all of those coming out, um, or they're out now. So we have the paper on its own. So if you just wanted to make the butterflies, you can get the designs for the large or the small butterflies. And always, you guys, if you ever need different sizes uh, or, you know, a certain just one butterfly all on one page, I can always do that as a custom sheet. So definitely let us know. But I did it in the, our small butterfly size, and then I did that big one for the play date. So um, we have that, and then we also have the discounted accessory kit, which has the sheets. It has all the isomalt that you'll need for the piece, and it has that half dome former um, mold so that you can pour a base to assemble all your butterflies onto. So that's going to be our next play date. I am so excited for that. I see you guys' comments. I'm glad you are loving it. Awesome. That one's going to be really fun. So that one is August 5th, I believe you Five. said. Yeah. Um, at 2 p.m. EST, just like this right here on our Facebook page. It's totally free to watch. And we do have those discounted accessory kits. Um, so we take 20% off when we bundle our kits together for a certain project. So definitely take advantage of that if you do want to recreate this project. Uh, let's see. Next weekend is our Ice Malt Beehive Workshop. So that one is on Zoom. 
So we do um, a small group so that we can really interact with each other and make the project step by step along with each other, which is super fun uh, on Zoom. We also have our next Zoom, which is going to be our skill social. So the skill socials are one hour guided practice sessions. And that one is going to be um, next month, I believe, on August 7th. Thank you uh, for ice malt sales. So I'm going to show you guys how to do classic ice malt sales so for some really pretty abstract designs, but also how I put my edible designs and edible images inside of them to create create patterns inside your clear glassy sails. So that will be super duper fun. So make sure to sign up for that one because you do have to sign up for that. Um, it's only $5 for that guided practice session. So I do kind of a really quick intro uh, demo and then we all kind of work together and talk and socialize while we're working, which is really fun to kind of dedicate that hour to just playing um, and kind of, you know, brainstorming and just trying something new or practicing something we've been wanting to. Those have been so much fun. We just did our butterflies. We did a basic butterfly one um, last week, which was super, super fun. So I've um, really been enjoying those. I'm glad that you guys are too. Uh, let's see. We have this Tuesday, we have um, Heather Salmon is going to be doing a live demo here on the Scene Cakes page. So make sure that you tune in for that. I will post all the details of that um, in the next couple of days so that you guys can definitely tune in. And then we also have Jesse and Riley doing a demo at the end of the month on the 30th. So make sure you tune in for the info on that one as well. Some awesome live free demos to watch with tons and tons of techniques and insight. Uh, let's see. We have some huge huge things coming up that I want to talk to you guys about, but I can only say a little bit about some of them. So um, next month, I can say August is our two year anniversary for the Simi Color Splash Colors. So we're going to be doing some big things for that, which I'm very excited about. I can't say anything more right now, but definitely keep your eyes peeled because we're going to have some awesome, awesome deals and awesome uh, tutorials and projects and things. Uh, so definitely keep your eyes peeled because we're going to be doing something big for that. Uh, we do have one thing that I can tell you about that we are so excited for, which is that we are now carrying all of the Dinky Doodle um, projects and her kits. So all of the awesome kits that she has come out with, we are now going to be selling those. So we are doing them uh, on our site. You can order them directly through our site and we will get them in from her in the UK. So if there's any of her kits that you want, um, we have a selection of them, right? In we have stock. a small selection to start. Yeah, so we have a small selection to start that are in stock now so you can actually get them quick, um, you know, quicker. And then if there's anything that you wanted to get from her site as always you can pre-order it through us so we basically put in a big order to her we get everything in and then we ship them out to you rather than you having to go through um and go through a shipping and all of that from the uk so we will be um kind of uh, a little bit easier yeah yeah it saves you the shipping charge um and kind of the uh hassle of having to go through all of that and you can get, just get it right through us and it's on our website so you can just you don't have to email or anything like that unless it's something that's not listed right now or it's out of stock but um if it's on the website and it's all on there you can just order right through the website and we will get that out to and you. she has so. some big things coming. She does, yes, and we are going to be carrying them for sure. So um, another thing that we will be able to talk about soon, but all of those I can tell you are on our website, which we're very excited about. Um, let's see what else we got. We have some events coming up. So at the end of August, we have CookieCon. Uh, I'm going to be teaching classes there. Uh, now I have two different classes. I have four classes, two different projects. So I have, I believe, one seat left in my Halloween um, classes. Out of the two classes I have, there's only one seat uh, left for my Halloween cookies I'm going to be doing. And I have a few seats left for my holiday cookies. So uh, more like wintry, Christmassy, holiday inspired. So um, there is still a couple of spots open if you want to snag one. It's in Orlando, uh, CookieCon this year at the end of August. Uh, let's see, we have, uh, we're going to be at the New Jersey show, the Jersey Shore show. Oops, I don't want to wiggle you guys. The Jersey Shore show um, in the end of September, 23rd and 24th. So make sure you come say hi to us. We'll have a booth there. Uh, I'm going to be teaching in Salt Lake City in Utah or in Murray, Utah, uh, August or October 7th through 9th. Um, so I have some awesome classes there and there are still some spots available if you would like to join us if you are in the Utah area. All right, what else we got? I have a back page here. Uh, we're going to be at Cake International again with Dinky Doodle, of course, uh, in the UK, in Birmingham. So that will be November 3rd through 5th. And then right after that, the 7th and 8th, we're going to be going back with Dinky Doodle uh, to... Uh, Nottingham, and we're going to be doing some classes in the Dinky Doodle studio there. So uh, really, really excited to do that and awesome. going to be awesome to see all of our UK sugar friends. Uh, and then, of course, as we talked about in January is our Simi Retreat, which we do still have some spots available. So all of the info for all of these is on our website um, and on our social media pages. And make sure to join the Simi Torch team group as well, because it is a super fun group where we post all of our updates and we can share all pictures. If you guys make this project from today or any of the projects from my online classes, um, it's always fun to share those in the group and kind of get different styles and see how people interpreted them in their own creative ways. So 
Super and duper fun. Trisha wants to know if you're a vendor at Cookie Con. Yes, we will be a vendor at Cookie Con. And Monique says uh, she could, she messed up on the time. She thought it was three. She's so upset. But there's oh, a replay. Yes, I'll save the replay um, here. And then I usually, in the ne within the ne next few days of the live demo, I put it on my YouTube as well. So you can find it a little bit easier on YouTube. But it will always be on Facebook as well. I never delete them. So, All right, fantastic. So hopefully we will see some of you guys at an upcoming show. Definitely come up and say hi because we will have a booth at all of those uh, different places that I mentioned. And then uh, if not, we will see you in our next live class or demo or uh, Skill on social. Yeah, Skill Social <laughs> and the Simi Torch Team group. Um, oh, and join the Simi Torch Team. Facebook group. Yes, join the See Me Torch team Facebook group for sure. Um, super fun place and super welcoming. Everybody's so friendly and so encouraging. So it's great for all levels um, to get tons of ice melt inspiration and just to share projects and ask questions. It's always super, super fun. So make sure to join it. We also do a sale every month exclusive to members. So um, we do a discount code every month, which is super fun. So we're uh, about halfway through July. We'll have a new one coming up in August. And we do some fun games and uh, prizes and things like that too. So. All right. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. If you think of any other questions you have, you can always send me a message or send me an email. Um, and I'm happy to answer them if you're watching back on this replay. And I uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.